Hi guys, it's Scott, King and Queen Cichlids, and today we're going to talk about the importance of finding a local fish club in your area and becoming a part of it. Okay? Let's get ready. Let's go! You get the two pretty girls in the video. That gets me lots of lots of views and likes. Hi guys, it's Scott from King Queen Cichlids. I am here today to talk about your local fish club. Now, if you're not a part of your local fish club, what the hell? What's the matter with you? There is so much that you can experience at your local fish club. As soon as you stop watching this video, get on the internet, Google your area, find out where the closest local fish club is at. Most areas have something within an hour range of them. Definitely try to find a local fish club. If for some reason you can't find one, leave a comment below. I guarantee you Liz and I will do our work and we will find a club within your area that you should become uh, associated with or we'll at least find someone in your area to reach out to you to talk to you about it. But today we're going to talk about the five benefits of going to a local fish club. Okay? Number one has to be and will always be for me that you will finally meet people of like minds. Now sometimes this hobby can be a little lonely. It's not the most popular hobby that's out there. But going to a local fish club, you will meet like-minded people. And it is an experience that you will never forget. Uh, I have re-entered in the hobby about 10 years ago when I created the Cichlid Club of York. And I have built relationships that will last me the rest of my life. Uh, fish people are absolutely the best people you are ever going to find. And I strongly encourage you to go to a local fish club meet people of like mind, don't be shy, and I know a lot of us, a lot of people in the hobby are introverts, um, but you have to go into the local fish club, have a smile on your face, introduce yourself and say, hey, I'm Scott McLaughlin, or I'm whoever I am, I keep big cichlids, or I keep this, and I am, this is my first day in the club, I want to know everything I can about the club. Now, it takes a little courage to do that. You have to come out of your comfort zone a little bit, but I guarantee you you're going to meet people who feel the same way you did at one point and are going to welcome you into the family, introduce you to people that are of like mind and that may be keeping the same things you keep, and you're going to become part of a family. I can say to you with no doubt in my mind that the Sickle Club of York is a family. That's how we started it. It was uh, people that became friends, that became family members. You know, it was, and it didn't stop at just fish. If someone needed something, someone's car broke down, we would, you, we would be there to pick someone up, drive them to work, whatever. Your fish club will be more than just a fish club to you if it's run properly. It will become part of your family. So that's my number one thing. Definitely go to a local fish club to meet like-minded people, to build relationships, to learn more. You're going to find people who have had experiences that you may be going through that can give you advice. Uh, you definitely want to go for the camaraderie and the relationships that you're going to learn to build and to blossom into long life friendships. So that's my number one reason to go to a local fish club. My number two reason to go to a local fish club would be the education. Now education means most clubs have a speaker that comes in once a month to do a talk on a specific topic that will help educate the people that are in the club to be successful in the hobby. Case in point, yesterday I went to the Aquarium Club in Lancaster County, my other local club that's about 45 minutes away, and one of my good friends, Christine Keys, did a talk on renovating her fish room. Those are in the auction. What? Yeah, those are um, uh, Tikachromos oligopanthus. Um, it's a Madagascar cichlid there on the pairs list. Um, my pair is a little dysfunctional. Now, through her talk, there was many things that I took away that I now want to implement into my fish room. And it's because of her talk 
that she educated me on things, uh, taught me ways to, you know, do a better job with my fish tanks that will in line take care, better care of my fish, make things easier for me. Uh, that's just her one talk. And we have, you will have people coming into your club that will talk about specific fish, about companies, about how they do filtration. Uh, the list goes on and on. So you're going to be provided with a wealth of knowledge that will help you be a better hobbyist uh, for yourself and, and for your fish room. So that would be my number two pick. You're going to be educated by speakers that come in. And quite honestly, not only speaker, but you're going to be, learn more education from the people within the club. Um, Aquarian Club of Lancaster County, which again, I was there yesterday. There's people that have been in the, the hobby for 50, 60 years, you know. Talk about a Kurt or a Joel, people like that who have a wealth of knowledge that you can reach out to and say, hey, I have this situation going on. Have you ever experienced it? What would you suggest I do to fix it? That uh, foundation that you're going to find at a local fish club is priceless. All right? So my number two reason to go to a local fish club is for the education and experience you're going to be provided with that's going to help you be a more successful hobbyist. Number three, let's be honest, number three could be number one for some people is the auctions. Uh, every tropical fish club, most of them, I haven't been to every one in the world obviously, but most tropical fish clubs have an auction at the end of the meeting. Five dollars, three drag blood, peacocks. Anybody want to take them home? Five dollars, five dollars, five dollars. Five dollars. Now, in these auctions, you are going to find fish that you're not going to find anywhere else at prices that are unbelievable. I mean, absolutely unbelievable. Some of these fish, if you go to a, a fish store, are going to cost sixty, seventy dollars, and at a fish local fish club, they're going to cost four or five dollars, depending on what it is. Now, we, I have seen some fish go to astronomical prices, but those are usually very rare fish, carrots fish, stuff like that. But uh, it's not uncommon to pick up African cichlids for two or three dollars that are already full grown, full color. I see Oscars going basically being given away for two or three dollars a pop. Um, we picked up some carrots fish for less than five dollars. These are fish that you're not going to find at your local fish store. You're definitely not going to find at PetSmart, Petco, Walmart, none of those crazy places. So if you're looking for a large variety of fish that you're not going to find many places at a price that is going to be fantastic, go to fish auction. If you're looking for equipment and for tanks that are absolutely cheapest you're ever going to find but still function properly, go to a local fish club and enjoy their auction. I picked up a 30 gallon tank, that's right, a 30 gallon tank for two dollars. I picked up a light for it and four extra bulbs for it for three dollars. It's amazing what your local fish club will have the auctions, quite honestly, one auction will pay for your membership. It's, it's just amazing. So, number three for me would be the auctions. You definitely want to go and experience the monthly auctions where you're going to get equipment and fish and plants for amazing prices that are just going to not be found anywhere else. Certainly not at those prices. So definitely check out your fish auctions. One little tip, one little uh, thing I don't like is when people come in just for the auction. Do the whole experience guys. Come in, meet people, listen to the speaker, enjoy some food, stay for the auction if you want to enjoy the auction. Don't wait for an hour after the hour's passed and show up and then come to the auction. That's bad. That's just bad. Be there for the entire experience. All right? Do that for me. All right, so again, number one was the people. You want to meet like-minded people. Number two is the education, whether that's through the monthly speakers or people already within the club. Number three is the auction. And number four, one of my favorites, is the programs that are run at these clubs. You have the Breeder Award Program, you have the CARES Program, uh, you have various programs different clubs are running. 
Now, the Breeder Award program is something that's run historically through all our clubs. Uh, you breed a specific fish, you bring fry in, you donate the fry, you get awards for those, those fish, those fry, and there is a competition between all the, all the members in the club to breed the most amount of different breed, different species of fish. So whoever breeds the most species of fish at the end of the year normally gets a trophy, award, a prize. Last year I was a BAP chair along with Liz and we got a handsome donations from Seacrest. Hey there fellow fish geeks, this is Shelby Bush coming to you from Seacrest Farms down here in Florida. Scott McLaughlin has been keeping me in touch and we've been talking cichlids and I am so excited to announce that Karen Haas is the winner of the BAP award that is, you know, the dynamic. I have bred the most cichlids. You are on your way to being a cichlid goddess, Miss Karen Haas. And we are so excited to be able to send you some prizes. Your choice so. of fish and a 55 gallon setup. So, the Breed Award program is a structure that's in most of the clubs. It's a lot of fun. It encourages you to get more fish and to breed fish and bring those fish back into the local fish club so other people will have the opportunity to do the same thing. It introduces new fish to other members who may not have even known about them. So Breed Award program, hands down, is one of my favorite programs. I used to do it for the American Cichlid Association as well. Definitely get involved in your breed award program. The CARES program, again, is a program we should all be invested in. This is a program where we are trying to save endangered fish from becoming endangered in their natural habitat. If these fish will come in, you will, you'll breed them, and then you'll try to pass those fry on to someone else so we can then build up the, uh, the quantity of these fish so they come out of the endangered status. Definitely, definitely get involved with CARES. It's a con conservation program. Uh, I will leave a link below so if you're not a member of CARES, you can become a member of CARES. I am uh, proud to be a part of the CARES team and I'll be doing much more work for CARES in 2019. But you definitely want to become a member of CARES program. Once you become an advanced, I, I don't want beginners jumping on the bandwagon. Become familiar with your, your normal fish, get, get a year at least experience, and then consider, if you're successful in that year, you don't have a lot of losses, becoming part of the CARES team and getting some of these endangered fish, breeding them, passing them on so we can get them off the endangered uh, list. Okay? So definitely check out CARES. Again, I'll leave a link below for that program. Next, number five, and this doesn't really, uh, not all local fish clubs do this, but many of them do. Number five for me is fish store discounts and fish store relationships. Many of our, you know, I'll talk about the Sigma Club of York. Sigma Club of York has a very strong relationship with a certain store called Reef to Rift. Uh, Reef to Rift has been absolutely fantastic to our club through donations, uh, they help us with shop hops, they help us with our uh, yearly event, the uh, Keystone Clash. That store has uh, been a godsend to us, invested into us, invested into our members, and we have tried to reciprocate that back to the store by coming to their store, supporting their store, buying fish, buying products there. Uh, the relationship between store and local clubs is uh, very important for both parties and especially for local clubs because sometimes we don't have all the funding we need to continue year after year after year. To have a club like a Reef to Rift to support the Sigma Club of York as well as many other clubs that it supports is uh, certainly important to the hobby. So one of the things, the fifth thing I like to talk about is fish store relationships. Uh, many times you'll get discounts if you're a member of a club where you can go and you'll get like 10% off of this or 10% off of that. There are many times there are specials that the fish store will run exclusively for local fish stores, uh, excuse me, exclusively for local fish clubs. Uh, many events are run. Uh, Scott Mauer is really good at this. Uh, he will run events uh, specifically for local fish clubs to help build more memberships. Uh, definitely want to not only be 
good with your local fish club, but you also want to build a relationship with your local fish store. These stores will allow you to exchange fish for store credit. Uh, you can do some trading. There might be some stuff you're looking for. You can go to that store owner and say, I'm looking for this specific uh, fish. And that store owner will do, most store owners will do this, will try to find the fish for you, get in into the shop, and not uh, charge you any, any heavy extra charges for that. So local fish stores is my fifth reason for wanting to become part of a club. You want to build those relationships with the surrounding clubs in your area, surrounding stores in your area. I also want to throw in another thing that I like about local fish clubs that kind of goes with the stores is raffles. Blue raffles. Blue raffle tickets. Did you mix them up? Get those ones off the bottom? Yeah. Yeah, the ones off the bottom are now on the top. The other ones on the bottom. You want to draw one? I'm going to try to get yours. Try to get yours. Watch your pull it. All right. She likes me better. I know. Two, two, no, six. Honey, that's not me. Got Try again. That seven, two, <laughs> two, six. Raffles. Definitely want to get involved with the raffles. Most local fish clubs have raffles where if you're a member, you get a free raffle and then you can buy extra raffle tickets that, that money feeds, again, the club and, and keeps the club running. But you definitely want to get involved with the raffles. And most of the time, it's a dollar a ticket. And some of the stuff that are in these raffle buckets, it's 50 to 60, sometimes $100. So it's good that you're putting money back into the club through the raffles. And then if you're lucky enough to win, some of the prizes that you get is astronomical. It's just incredible. The number one so, reason that you want to become part of a local fish club is like-minded people in the hobby who are going through the same thing you're doing, going through and experiencing the same thing that you're experiencing, and the friends and the family members, and it's just a great, great time. I personally love meeting people. Now, I'm not the norm, but if, you know, I'll come up and introduce myself, or I'll say hi to you. It doesn't matter who you are, if I've ever met you before or not. I don't care about your race, your color, your sex. I don't care about any of that stuff. Are you a good person? Period. And I'm going to introduce myself, I'm going to tell you who I am, I'm going to ask what you're into, and I'm going to try to build a, a friendship with you, you know? And that's just how I am. I hope more people will become less introverted and just take a risk and say, Hi, I'm, this, I'm such and such, and I saw that you're new to the club, and I just wanted to introduce myself, and if there's anything I can do to help you, let me know, because this is our club. So, number one, it's the people that you meet in the club. That's the number one reason that I would tell you to join a local fish club. Number two, it's the education that you're going to receive that's going to make you a better hobbyist every month. There's a different speaker, there's people within that club itself that are experienced. You know, I think about the North Jersey Aquarium Society. You have a Dr. Paul Azell, a Rosario, a Ted Coletti. Some of these guys have written books have gone to continents and countries around the world. I mean, Dr. Paul Azell, how many cichlids has he found and been named for him? Uh, Rosario just put out an incredible book. Just think, if, I mean, I would be so proud to be a member of the North Jersey Aquarium Society just based on the history and the experienced people that you have in that club. I'm hoping one day the Sickle Club of York will be the same. I'm hoping that I do something, accomplish something significant where people will be like, yeah, Scott McLaughlin goes to that club. You know him? Or Dwayne Walker. You know, I just hope that our club will keep building and that's one of the things that pushes me. That's why I get into a lot of different organizations. I want to tap into this hobby. I want to experience everything that I can. I want to put my name in the hobby. I, I want to feel like when I'm done with the hobby or I, I, I decide to kind of retire and just get back to enjoying my fish, that I've done everything I could and experienced everything I could that my name would be mentioned as, hey, that guy was, was something special in the hobby. We needed him. That's just my own personal thing. So, number two, education. You definitely want to come for the education. Number three, you definitely want to come for the auctions because I tell you what, you're not going to find any fish, any equipment, uh, any fish food, any plants better 
at an auction. You actually get to talk to the people that brought the fish in, and you're going to get get fish and equipment and stuff at incredible prices. It's it's amazing. Number four is definitely the programs. You want to advance in the hobby? You're just tired of, of looking at your fish and doing fish uh, water changes? Get involved in the program. It will keep you invested into this hobby and pushing and making you want to do even more. Talked about uh, number five. It's the relationship that you build from fish club to fish store, the discounts that you get, and then I threw in a little extra one. You definitely want to enjoy the raffles. Uh, most clubs have raffles where for a dollar ticket you get to have a chance of getting a couple of really good deals, a really good a bunch of prizes. That money goes back into the club and invests back in the club for the following years. Again, it costs money to run a fish club. It's speaker cost. It's food, there's rent to be paid, uh, there's, you know, the programs, the awards, there's so much that I think people don't realize that happens at tropical fish clubs. We need money. Those clubs need money to function. So it's very important uh, for people to come, attend, support, become members. Most memberships, $30 or less for a year, which is incredible because $30, you will get that money back in one meeting, I promise you. One good auction, you'll get two times what you just paid for in the membership. So just think about that over a 12-month span, $30, you're getting food, you're getting discounts, auction, free education. It's, it's a great deal. So whatever your membership fee is in your local area, trust me, it's well worth it. All right? So that is my talk on why you should become part of your local fish club. Uh, I have some footage here and there that I've spliced in just to show you the Sickle Club of York, the Aquarium Club of Lancaster County, some of the things that you will see at your local fish club. Again, uh, this hobby is great, but if you really want to experience that the fullest, become part of your local fish club, get involved. These clubs always need volunteers. They need help. There's not enough people that want to step up and be president or vice president or secretary or just someone to help set up. These clubs need these things, okay? So get involved in a club, get your feet wet. Once you feel comfortable, then step up for different positions that are needed to keep the club running. Do your due diligence. Make sure you pay your members' fee. Get into the raffles. Do everything you can to put money back into the club that you love so much so it continues to run and run. As I said, we just did a talk on the Sickle Club of York last Saturday, and it really got me fired up and invested in how difficult it is to run a club, how difficult it is to keep it running, and how proud I am that after six years, this club is still running strong. So, And that has to do with a lot of help from a lot of different people. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed this week's talk. I hope you will hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and hit that notification bell. I don't want to have to get Liz in here with her whip to get you guys fired up. Now! But I do appreciate that over the last week from our last video, I have gotten over 100 new subs, our likes went up, our watch time went up, and I, got, I have to tell you, I got to give all that credit to Liz because you guys got fired up when you saw Liz. So. Hopefully you won't be too, too disappointed that Liz is not in this video. She wanted to take today off, but I hope to have her in our next video. Um, and if I don't see you by Thanksgiving, you guys have a happy, happy holiday, a happy Thanksgiving. Um, and again, thank you for all the love, all the support that you have given King and Queen Sigmas. So that's it, guys. Once again, if you're not having fun in the hobby, you're just not doing something right. Keep your eyes peeled on King and Queen Sigmas. We're going to tell you how to have fun. We're going to show you how to have fun in this hobby day in, day out. All right? Love you guys. Thank you. Bye-bye.